I started off this talk, the convening is a, is a real challenge and to bring people together, to put something out that is authoritative and respectful and brings people along. So when the report got published, the ACES report on December 26th, we called this meeting to really celebrate that. And I've asked Richard if he wouldn't be willing to come up and share a few words about the ACES report and hopefully ACES too. <clears throat> standing between you and dinner, so uh, we'll make sure I get on time. So uh, the ACES group, it's the Advancing Contracting and Energy Story. We've been working on this for a number of years. Uh, essentially, the idea was everybody was really interested in energy storage. However, a lot of times people didn't know the questions to ask about what it is, so they were never comfortable even if presented with all the right answers. So one of the things we wanted to do was to go through for project development and provide a, a guide, a best practice guide. And so we, we looked through 30, 36 different segments of a project development, and a project development package or process. And we broke it up and, and we said, okay, you're gonna have, everybody's gonna write the same structure. Pretend you're writing it for somebody who doesn't know what you're talking about. So section one, what is it? Section two, uh, you know, how is energy storage affecting this differently? And section three is, uh, you know, are there any best practices, lessons learned that we've done so far? Section four is, we are no, in no way remotely close to being complete with this thing. So here's an entire page of other resources to go read about because this thing is going to keep going. Uh, we were able to pull together 70 different organizations, trade associations, companies, uh, non-government groups, and, and government groups, and we wrote up a 317-page report. Uh, it's publicly available. It's floating around as much as we can. Uh, the orange button is put it on their website. Uh, and this is how I first got to know Dixon, um, through do, hosting some of the DOE Energy Source Financing Summits, but also realizing that the data interoperability was you know, an important aspect of this. Um, in a previous life, I was an investment banker and an equity analyst. It's always fun. You, you can get everybody to get really interested on a subject if you talk about growing their market. Typically, the people you're getting really interested in are the strategy or the business development people. It never really kind of goes anywhere after that. Talking to Dixon, I was realizing that if you really want to sell something, get the accountants interested. So figuring out how to save people money in what they're doing is really what happens. So the ACES program and the stand, you know, getting standards on data communication, yes, it'll help grow the market. But really, you're going to reduce the transaction costs, and you're also going to increase the security of those transactions. So that's why I thought that that was a really incredibly important aspect to incorporate into the ACES program because we people like the idea of batteries, but we want to make sure that they're really useful. So we want to make sure that, you know, and they can do all sorts of different things. So whatever it is you're using with it, by having a standardized data uh, interoperability, you can get this standard data reporting done, and you can figure out what it's doing, and you can rely on the fact it's doing what you want it to do. So we've been able to publish it. What, and Dixon had mentioned, ACES too. And what we're trying to do now is sort of uh, put into work what we want it to do. So ACES 1 was a best practice guide. Press. ACES 2, is trying to figure out how do we develop, how do we actually provide people these tools, knowing full well that the market is rapidly evolving. Frankly, I worked on ACES too with Bob Fleischman and a couple other people for a couple, you know, a year or two trying to get it up and running and everything else. Things changed even, you know, in between. So, you know, the idea of ACES too is step, you know, we're gonna have three layers of this stuff, uh, three layers of products. One is to have some standard contract language for, um, for technical aspects that want to go into a revenue contract. 
Step two is checklists, uh, other technical components so that people have a good understanding of what should go in. Not complete and, and, and making sure they know that this is the bare minimum, but this is the direction where you want to go. And step three, and here's the most important part, is we're trying to make this a global aspect. So just like with standards here in North America, we use UL as for our electrical standards. Other places use CE and other groups. So the basically step three is a series of reports that translates what's in, in category in levels one and two into different country level materials. Because what we're trying to do is give enough resources to people in the US, but also all over the world to say, we want to reduce your transaction costs. We want to reduce the risk you feel about instituting these technologies. And we want to figure out how to get the capital providers and everybody else who can be involved uh, feeling more confident about it. And a key component of that will be the data interoperability and making sure that as you are developing these things, installing them, operating them, and trying to figure out how to couple them together in larger capital, uh, that all of that information that typically used to be on paper just kind of flows through. So I, I see this as a, the, the effort that Dixon works on as an incredibly important aspect of trying to make sure that we get energy storage products into the rest of the power market. Now, with that, um, that, that was kind of a focused thing. Why don't I just, unless Dixon wants to say anything else, I'll end on that and I'll just give you five minutes of your life back. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I, 